What is going on everybody and welcome back to Too Much Tech and in today's video we're going to be doing some a little bit different than what we normally do. We're doing another DIY project on a keyboard again. This time I decided to build my somewhat custom keyboard. It's a custom and pro too. Pretty sure nobody else has one that's exactly like this one. And I'll go over why I chose the and pro two in just a little bit, but um, I thought that it was a really good base for what I really wanted to do in terms of uh, my daily driver keyboards. Obviously, you know, I'm gonna be using this keyboard for typing and editing and playing games and whatnot. So I wanted to pick certain switches and stuff like that and everything to kind of accomplish that and give me a better typing experience than what was available on a stock and pro 2 regardless of how much money i spent because i know that there are some other switch options that are available if you look hard enough but um that's not really what i wanted to do i wanted to do something a little bit different switch it up get a little bit more uh you know switch that wasn't necessarily heard of and improve the and pro 2 as a whole the aesthetic that i decided to go with was this miami vice theme i've had these matrix keycaps for a while and i had them on my full-size ducky one two that i really haven't been using at all just because it's, it's too big and i feel like i've kind of outgrown full-size keyboards believe it or not and i think i'm kind of done with them i'm like 10 keyless or smaller 100 percent of the time and that's just what i like using unless i'm at work then i'll use a full-size keyboard but other than that at home i like to use either a 60 percent or a 10 keyless one thing i do want to mention especially because of the color theme like i said we went with the miami vice color theme and we chose these matrix keycaps we also got hooked up with an absolutely sick and lovely space cable dude this new space cable that they've got the coils are super tight and uh, it's, it's just beautiful. I love looking at it. I love looking at it. It's, it's so dope. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I will have their link in the description below. No, this isn't paid promotion. Um, they just sent me the cable for free. So huge shout out to you guys. Appreciate it a ton. So I went with some KL Speed Silver Switches from flashquirk.com. I did a little bit of research and I seen that a lot of people were saying that the KL Speeds were better than the Cherry Speed Switches that I was gonna get originally. And you can actually buy an Ampro 2 with Cherry Speed Switches if you go and buy it from mechanicalkeyboards.com. Might take a while to ship, but you can buy a stock like that. But I already knew that I was gonna take apart the switches anyways and lube them and put films on them. I use Crytox 205 lube. It's a little bit of a thicker lube and so far, over the past a uh, little bit less than a week. It's been holding up pretty good and I hope that it continues to because I do not want to go through this process again. <laughs> and then I got some switch films from TX Keyboard. I got green because uh, I thought it looked cool. A little accent, you can kind of see it through the keycap. So I like the green a lot. And I also decided to use some neoprene sponge foam from Amazon. I think it was like 10 or 15 bucks or something like that for some sound deadening so that obviously, you know, it would sound a lot better. I didn't type on it before I put it in there. So I don't really know how much better it is, especially with the loose speed switches. It seems a lot more solid now. Like when I bottom out the keys, I don't get like a really empty feedback anymore like I used to on the Amp Pro without that sound isolation. Talking about the build a little bit, um, basically I had to take apart the Amp Pro 2. There was like this really weird hex switch. So I had to like make a run the lows real quick to see um, which of these screws would fit. And uh, basically I just brought the keyboard with me and took a screwdriver and like just like put it in there like at lows till I found the right one that was gonna fit so I was like all right this will do the job I gotta buy this one that was kind of funny after I was able to get the keyboard apart had to disconnect the battery obviously it's wireless is one of the reasons why I picked the Ampro 2 is because it's wireless I had to disconnect the battery and then I had to desolder all the previous switches and that kind of honestly took a while it took forever I did buy a desoldering tool and it worked for a little bit but after about 20 minutes, it just wasn't working as well. So I let it cool down, tried to pick it up again, and it still was not working as well. So I had to do it the hard way, and it took way longer than it should, honestly. And after I was able to desolder all the old switches, I was waiting on the films to get here because I kind of decided on those last minute. Took apart all the kale switches, lubed them all up, and then after that, I installed all the films as soon as I got them, and then we resumed rebuilding this keyboard so after that put in all the new switches resoldered the switches that only took me like maybe 15 minutes tops i think it was really quick and then put in the foam and then i was good to go it was a fairly easy process it just took a while i wouldn't say it was a hard thing to do it just took a while and that was kind of my thing i definitely think the next keyboard build that i do i'm probably going to pick a pcb that's hot swappable why because i want to try more switches and see what else i like i know right now I'm really in love with linear switches. Tactiles are okay, but I really do love linear switches right now. I just like that they're, they're so much smoother and quieter and stuff like that. Maybe at some point 
I'll get some holy pandas or something like that and I'll try those out maybe on my next keyboard build but we'll see we'll see but yeah the process was pretty straightforward I am really excited to start using this thing as my daily driver I've been using it obviously a little bit already and I love it so far and I don't really think that I would change anything it pretty much turned out exactly how I wanted the only thing I'm kind of considering is possibly swapping out the case for a metal case I'm not necessarily sure if I want to do that, but I think that I might. But honestly, I don't know. I really like the clean white look of the regular Ampro 2 case, which is why I didn't already order a metal case yet. But yeah, I don't know. If I got like a metal one, it'd probably have to be white too, so that it would match the cable and then obviously, you know, the original aesthetic of the Ampro 2. But I don't know. I'll think about it. I haven't decided yet, but so far it's been working flawlessly. All the keys work just like normal. One of the reasons why I chose the Ampro 2 other than the fact that it's wireless is because the RGB software that Obis Labs gives you is freaking fantastic for a 60% keyboard. And there's not really another one that I've seen that works as well. And the Ducky 1 2 Mini, unfortunately, does not have software, even though the full size and 10 keyless one, the software is supported, but not on the 1 2 Mini, it's all hardware based. And I want a little bit more customization, a little bit easier, and and this definitely does the job. Anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning into the video. I'm going to leave you guys with the sound test. And you guys can let me know your opinion of these Kale Speed Silver Switches lubed and filmed. And uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you're interested in building your own custom keyboard. I know that I definitely got my eye on a, a couple. Before I start spending a ton of money on custom keyboards, I really think that I want to start and get my audio game together and kind of get off these Astros. Cause don't get me wrong, I love these Astros, but I think it's, I've been using them for so long, I kind of want to try something different. And I did say that one of my goals tech wise was to uh, expand my audio horizons in 2020 and see uh, what higher end audio systems I'm going to enjoy listening to. So I think that's the uh, the next big thing that I want to do um, other than, you know, build more keyboards. Once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you guys are new and enjoy the sound test of these Kale Speeds.